people you know, talking to the people you don't know. Talk to the checker at the grocery store that you go to. Talk to everyone you can, and don't tell them that they're doing something wrong, but tell them what they can do to do what's right. system. First of all, I would like to say that I'm really amazed at how easily kids are led to believe all the marketing and advertising on TV, at public schools, and pretty much everywhere else you look. It seems to me like corporations are always trying to get kids, like me, to get their parents to buy stuff that really isn't good for us or the planet. Little kids especially are attracted by colorful packaging and plastic toys. I must admit, I used to be one of them. I also used to think that all of our food came from these happy little farms where pigs rolled in mud and cows grazed on grass all day. What I discovered was this is not true. I began to look into this stuff on the internet, in books, and in documentary films, in my travels with my family. I discovered the dark side of the industrialized food system. First, there's genetically engineered seeds and organisms. That is when a seed is manipulated in a laboratory to do something not intended by nature like taking the DNA of a fish and putting it into the DNA of a tomato. Yuck. Don't get me wrong. I like fish and tomatoes, but this is just creepy. The seeds, the seeds are then planted, then grown. The food they produce have been proven to cause cancer and other problems in lab animals. And people have been eating food produced this way since the 1990s. And most folks don't even know they exist. Did you know rats that genetically engineered corn had developed signs of liver and kidney toxicity? These include kidney inflammation and lesions and decreased kidney weight. Yet almost all the corn we eat has been altered genetically in some way. And let me tell you, corn is in everything. And don't even get me started on the confined animal feeding operations called CAFOs. <laughs> Conventional farmers use chemical fertilizers made from, made from fossil fuels that they mix with the dirt to make plants grow. They do this because they've stripped the soil from all nutrients, from growing the same crop over and over again. Next, more harmful chemicals are sprayed on fruits and vegetables, like pesticides and herbicides, to kill weeds and bugs. When it rains, these chemicals seep into the ground or run up into our waterways, poisoning our water too. Then they irradiate our food, trying to make it last longer, so it can travel thousands of miles from where it's grown to the supermarkets. So I ask myself, how can I change? How can I change these things? This is what I found out. I discovered that there's a movement for a better way. Now, a while back, I wanted to be an NFL football player. I decided that I'd rather be an organic farmer instead. That way... <laughs> Thank you. And that way, I can have a greater impact on the world. I learned this guy named Joel Salatin. They call him a lunatic farmer because he grows against the system. Since I'm homeschooled, I want to go hear him speak one day. This man, this lunatic farmer, doesn't use any pesticides, herbicides, or genetically modified seeds. And so for that, he is called crazy by the system. I want you to know that we can all make a difference by making different choices, by buying our food directly from local farmers or neighbors who we know in real life. I'll, some people say organic or local food is more expensive, but is it really? With all these things I've been learning about the food system, it seems to me that we can either pay the farmer or we can pay the hospital. I know... <laughs> now, I know, one, I know definitely which one I would choose. I want you to know that there are farms out there, like Bill Keener and Sequatchie Coast Farms in Tennessee whose cows do eat grass and whose pigs do roll in the mud, just like I thought. Sometimes I go to Bill's farm and volunteer so I can see up close and personal where the meat I eat comes from. 
I want you to know that I believe kids will eat fresh vegetables and good food if they know more about it and where it really comes from. I want you to know that there are farmer's markets in every community popping up. I want you to know that me, my brother, and sister actually like eating baked kale chips. I try to share this everywhere I go. Not too long ago, my uncle said that he offered my six-year-old cousin cereal. He asked if he wanted organic toasted O's or the sugar-coated flakes. You know, the one with the big striped cartoon carrots on the front? My little cousin told his dad that he would rather have the organic toasted O cereal because Burke said he shouldn't eat sparkly cereal. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how we can make a difference, one kid at a time. So next time you're at the grocery store, think local. Choose organic, know your farm, and know your food. All right, welcome to the Health Ranger Report. This is Mike Adams of the Health Ranger reporting for naturalnews.com. Today we have some new information, breaking news from a medical journal called Cell Research. This is news about the dangers of genetically modified foods, and this is new information. This shows the mechanism by which genetically modified foods, or, or GM foods, or GE foods, genetically engineered, may alter your organ function. You see, in the past, Monsanto has said that genetically modified seeds and foods are presumed to be safe, presumed safe. It doesn't mean they're proven safe, in fact, Right here from the Monsanto website, a couple of quotes you need to know. Here it is. Monsanto says, quote, there is no need to test the safety of DNA introduced into genetically modified crops. And they go on to say, there is no need for or value in testing the safety of GM foods in humans. So you see, Monsanto has a position that they don't even need to test the safety of these genetically modified foods because it doesn't even matter. But now, here in Cell Research, we have a new study called the Exogenous Plant MIR16A. That is a uh, microRNA study that we're talking about here. Specifically targets mammalian LDL RAP1. That's a receptor for LDL cholesterol uh, function in the liver. Evidence of cross-kingdom regulation by microRNA. Now, it means that microRNA which is information, it is genetic information, has now been found to pass from the foods through digestion into your blood and then to attach onto your organs. You got that? It goes from the food through digestion into your blood and attaches onto your organs and there it modifies the function and the expression of those organs. This is groundbreaking science. This nullifies the safety claims of Monsanto. And it means that we are more than just the vitamins and minerals and fiber and carbohydrates and proteins that we eat. It means we are also eating information. You got that? We're eating information because DNA and RNA is information. So when we're eating this micro RNA, it's surviving that process and then providing information to the cells and the organs in our body. Maybe this is why GMOs are causing such widespread infertility because the microRNA is attaching to the receptor sites of the fertility organs and altering the expression or the function of those fertility organs. Let me read you some more from the study because it's quite, it's quite fascinating. This is in the abstract of the study, which again was published in the September 20th edition, uh, 2011, of Cell Research. The abstract says, quote, here we report the surprising findings that exogenous plant microRNAs are present in the sera, that means the blood serum, and tissues of various animals, and that these exogenous plant microRNAs are primarily acquired orally through food intake. That, again, is breaking science. It changes everything. You see, you already know you are what you eat, and normally that means you are the vitamins and the minerals and the other nutrients that you consume. We know that that's true on a physical level or even a biochemical level, but what about the information that you eat? Are you also the information? The answer is yes, and this is, again, a whole new realm of science. When a predator is consumed by, it, I'm sorry, when a predator consumes prey, there is a predator slash prey relationship where there is a transfer of information from the prey to the predator. So back in American Indian lore, when the American Indians would kill and consume a buffalo, they would say that in some sense you become, or that buffalo becomes part of you. Or, or a part of you becomes the buffalo. You and that animal or the plant that you consume become one. What we're finding now with the study is that, that that is genetically a true statement at some interesting level. It's not just metaphor. 
it's actually biochemically true that you become in a small way, but a very true way, part of what you consume. Now, what happens when you consume plants that have been altered, artificially concocted in a laboratory by profit-driven scientists working for the most evil corporation in the world? You get information that's bad information. It's not natural information. It is frankenfood information. And when you consume that, that information goes into your body and then begins to program your organs and your cells and your tissues to behave in a way that is artificial, that is not natural, that is Frankensteinian in its effect, in essence. That's what we're seeing with genetically modified foods. That's why this is a big deal. Let me read you some more quotes from this particular study. It says that the, this MIR16A, at 168A could bind to the human mouse low-density lipoprotein receptor, those, that's the LDL uh, cholesterol receptors, uh, adapter protein, inhibit LDL, LDL RAP1 expression in the liver. Again, this is altering the, your liver function in terms of regulating cholesterol, and consequently decrease LDL removal from mouse plasma. What that means is that you would have high LDL levels in your blood. These findings demonstrate that exogenous plant microRNA in food can regulate the expression of target genes in mammals. You got that? If you truly understand what's being said here, your jaw should be dropping to the floor. It's that big of a deal. This is huge. It means that, again, eating these genetically modified foods and crops can alter the expression of your organs. MicroRNAs have been widely shown to modulate various critical biological processes including differentiation, that's cell specialization, apoptosis, which is part of the cancer prevention process in human, normal human cell metabolism, proliferation, the immune response, and the maintenance of cell and tissue identity. Now, <laughs> that's another crucial statement. What do you get when your cell doesn't remember what identity it's supposed to express? You get a DNA mutation that results in the formation of a cancer a cancer cell that goes on to become a cancer tumor. So what we are seeing here now written in this paper in language that's, that's very technical, but if you understand it in layman's terms, it means simply this. If you eat genetically modified foods, you are absorbing information from those foods that can potentially cause cancer in your body. It can alter the expression, the function of your organs, such as the liver and possibly in fact, very likely, many other organs, including your brain, including fertility organs, including your kidneys, perhaps even your heart. In other words, the more genetically modified food you consume, the less human you become. That is, is a shocking but true statement. By eating this information, you are becoming less human and less natural. It's literally altering, altering the expression of your body and your body's tissues. Going on in this study, again, published in Cell Research, it goes on to state that this has the potential to selectively interact with specific target cells and mediate intracellular communication. That's, oh, wow. The honeybee brought Eden to the planet. This tribute that we are laying on our landscape is the greatest gift that we have to honor these beautiful evolutionary ancestors. So I say right now, looking at these beautiful people, and each of you represents a hive of your own, each of you represents a story that we are telling new. Each of you represents a huge, a huge body of people that are here to save the world because we are sacredly connected to the planet. We are But the honey
modified ingredient is soy. This is very challenging for vegetarians because a lot of veggie burgers in particular are made up of soy. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's either organic soy or a completely organic product like I said or just avoid it. I mean conservatively here we have that 96.7 percent of soy is genetically modified and that's conservative. Also we have glyphosate being sprayed on them, which is Monsanto's uh, Roundup toxin. Beyond that, we have corn coming in at number two with uh, just over 90 plus percent being modified. This, of course, comes in tortilla chips, just about everything. High fructose corn syrup is also genetically modified oftentimes and contains mercury, according to the Washington Post. If you don't believe that, we're going to throw it up on the screen. Just Google high fructose corn syrup Mercury, Washington Post, or just Mercury, and you'll definitely find it's on Natural Society as well. So high fructose corn syrup, which is in almost 100% of processed foods, it's in Pepsi, Coca-Cola, etc., etc. I know they're switching to real sugar now because of the consumer outrage, but high fructose corn syrup is something that you definitely need to avoid, not even just for the GMOs. Um, it's also interesting to note that a lot of those sodas that don't contain high fructose corn syrup to contain aspartame, which is still GMO, admitted back in the 90s, just look up aspartame GMO independent. It's in the independent in the 90s article. The Monsanto representative goes in and he says that they grow the aspartame using fecal matter, basically bacteria fecal matter that's then been genetically modified in which they use to grow the aspartame on. So for everyone saying that aspartame is just essentially amino acids and it's perfectly healthy and it's perfectly great, it's actually genetically modified. So that really ends the entire argument right there. It's a modified bacteria waste. Then we have sugar. Um, according to Natural News, genetically modified sugar beets were introduced to the U.S. market in 2009 and are among the most heavily modified substances among this entire list. So sugar, that's... We have high fructose corn syrup and sugar. Basically eliminates almost all processed foods right then and there, which you should not be eating in the first place, but just another reason that they're heavily modified. Papayas. This is a surprise. GMO papayas have been grown in Hawaii for consumption since 1999. Though they can, can't be sold to countries in the European Union, they are welcome with open arms in the United States and Canada, which is like most other GMO products. They're actually denying a lot of shipments to other European countries now because they're finding just traces of GMOs due to the contamination. And as we broke several months ago, Monsanto actually planted genetically modified alfalfa before it was even approved by the USDA. So what happens is a contamination spreads. You'll be planting something and no one will even know that it's there. It'll spread onto their farm. Monsanto will say, therefore, we own that plot of land on your farm because you're planting GMOs when it actually was just the wind trailing GMO contamination. And that's why there's so much widespread contamination of GMOs everywhere. Number seven is cotton. Found in cotton oil, cotton originating in India and China in particular is heavily modified and contains GMOs. If you're wearing a cotton shirt, chances are it's genetically modified. Not as much of an issue as consuming it, but it definitely is touching your body and you don't want to support genetic modification so it helps to buy high quality organic, particularly hemp clothing that does not then destroy the environment causing genetically modified huge mutant rootworms and super weeds that are now completely decimating the atmosphere. Dairy. 
Your dairy products may contain growth hormones since as many as one-fifth of all dairy cows in America are pumped up with these hormones. Monsanto's health hazardous RBGH, which is essentially cloned material, has been banned in 27 countries but is still in most U.S. cows, about 30%. If you drink milk, buy organic or buy raw if you can, unless you want to go to jail. 9 and 10, zucchini and yellow squash. Closely related, these two squash varieties are modified to resist viruses. It's always pushed as something that is highly beneficial. Just like Ireland is now getting its potato modified to fight off another uh, issue that could cause a famine always shown as something that's going to help the population when in reality like i said it's linked to organ damage infant mortality sterility the list goes on and on there are certain animals that are eating gmos and just dropping dead and the maker is just saying oh that's just a coincidence has nothing to do with it whatsoever so the best advice here as far as avoiding these GMOs, is to buy organic. Like I said, if you can't do that, then try and avoid these. Just write them down on the list.